Well, now that I got this unscrewed, the mystery of the uh, oil leak at the sending unit uh, or uh, oil pressure gauge is solved. There's a uh, tiny split right there in this plastic tube, right there, right below where that nut is. If I would back this nut down on the tube further, it's kind of a tight fit. You'll see, there we go. There's this little brass ferrule right here, and what happens is when you slide this back down the tube, it doesn't want to go back up it, and then when you tighten this nut, because of its beveled tapered shape, it actually clamps down on that. So if I cut this tube back to where the tube isn't damaged, that should be an easy fix. All right, as far as the wiring goes, I got the two wires that come up through this uh, um, right here. One goes to the right of the, uh, let's see, it'll be actually the left-hand terminal of the ammeter. So I just loosen that nut take this off and I'm gonna put the nut back on there for safekeeping and then got the other wire it actually goes to a terminal um, where does that go that goes to oh, a terminal on the uh, starter button the push to start button so I'm going to get that from the other side. It's easier to get to that from the other side. And then you've got a 12 volt wire here going to the uh, ballast resistor over here. And of course, this connection was already broken. This the only thing that's holding this on is this wire is just kind of haphazardly stuck in there. So I need to fix that later. But for now, I'll just use that to my advantage to disconnect that wire that way. And so now I've got to get. All right, now I can open up my dash right here, take these little screws out, take this dash out so I can get to that wire. And of course, if we had the generator on here, the original generator, we'd have more wiring to deal with, but we don't. Okay, drop the dash, little front panel over here, uh, down and can easily get to that screw terminal right there on the starter. And I'm gonna unscrew that right now. Well, uh, maybe not. This uh, spade lug, that was just precariously placed on that fuse holder fell off again um, but my bigger problem is that that screw is so tight that as I turn it it's twisting the whole terminal I could very easily break this off of my perfectly good even though it's rusty perfectly good starter button so what I want to do is I want to um, <clears throat> put some penetrant on that screw and let it sit that way I don't have to force it Oh, just a quick note, in case you were wondering, I did disconnect the battery terminal. Oh, my half-inch breaker bar made short work of those tight cap screws. Pop three of those bolts out and loosen the fourth one considerably. Allows me to pop this up so I can get that bolt out of the throttle linkage. And I'm going to put the bolt back in there, put the nut on it, so I don't misplace it. Oops. Just as I'd hoped, that rod for the throttle actually does just slide into that hole. So as you pull up on this whole thing, it just slides right out. Well, you get a love PB blaster. Within minutes, that screw broke loose and without uh, damaging the starter switch. So now I've got that wire disconnected. I even put some of the PB blaster on my choke control over here because my choke cable was frozen. I've been manually fiddling with the choke. It'd be nice to be able to use that again. And I noticed that when I play with the end of the cable here, I can actually feel that the cable feels free down this end. So it's bound up at the top and more than likely where it's bound up is where water has been getting in. You can see a rust on that shaft, so it's probably the shaft is actually seized in here. So if the PB blaster does its magic, it might actually get my choke cable back, which will be nice when I put this all back together. All right now I'm going to undo the tack cable, which it screws into the bottom of the tachometer right in there. And I don't know if you noticed in previous videos, but the tachometer doesn't seem to work. Uh, the cable actually seems like it's really loose in there, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. All right, now I got the 
coolant temperature gauge and uh, can't remember if that's a dry well or a wet well on that sensor bulb. A dry well means that this is a sleeve inside here and that this I could unscrew this and pull the sensor right out and no water will come out because the sleeve actually is immersed in the water and it, it uh, acts as a barrier between the water and the sensor. But because the sensor is completely surrounded by that sleeve which is immersed in the water, it still gives you a temperature reading. Um, if it's a wet well, then the second that I loosen this, I'm going to get coolant coming out. So I'm going to start loosening it and if it gets start getting coolant coming out of it, then I'm going to just tighten it back up again and go to plan B, which is to just remove the uh, gauge from the... Uh, well, actually, that's not going to work either because if I remove the gauge, to remove that gauge, I got to drop that bracket off, and the gauge has to come up from the top, and then the whole cable is going to have to go with it. All right, so that's not going to work. So let's hope that's not a wet well. That's a uh, wet well. I don't know why I didn't remember that. I mean, cripes, why can't I remember that this was just a bushing when I took it out of the head in the first place? Uh, all right, so try something different. So two three-eighths inch nuts and this bracket comes right off and voila, this comes right out. Of course, it comes out in the wrong direction than I want it to come out, unfortunately. Oops. But there she be. And that does not disconnect from this. So I have no choice in the matter. No way that's going to go through that hole that way. Boy, you know, I think in the IT manual, one of the steps to taking out the steering assembly is draining the cooling system. And I couldn't figure out why they would have you drain the cooling system just to take out the steering box way back here. Now, I actually think maybe this is what they're talking about because you've got to disconnect the temp gauge. But I mean, it just seems crazy. Well, I've only got two bolts in this uh, dashboard that are holding it to this bracket. There's actually supposed to be, I think, three on each side, but these weren't installed when I got it. So since I've got only two to take out, I'm gonna drop these two out and make my life a little easier when I'm lifting this dashboard assembly off of the tractor. Well, that temperature gauge cable so long, I was actually able to pull the whole dash assembly off and leave it all hooked up still. So, for the time being, I don't really need it out of the way. I could actually move it down here Well, it's actually it's routed in a strange way through the cable here. Uh, tack cable. Let's see. The tack cable? Oh, yeah, I get the tack cable out of the way. Tack cable is already disconnected, so I just rerouted that to the side. Let that hang down. Pull this off to the side. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Hmm. All right, getting dark enough that I'm going to quit for the night. But I just want to talk about what I'm going to do next. Um, in the manual, it talks about having to drain the hydraulic fluid system before you can take the steering out. Now, again, not quite sure why you would have to do that. I understand why you would want to do that, especially if you were a shop servicing this tractor. It would just make good sense that any work you did to the steering system after you got done, you want all nice new clean fluid in there. So drain and refill of the, of the uh, system would uh, seem apropos at, the, at that juncture. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is I'm not doing it because I'm looking at your two lines. This is your, it says PR right here. So this is your pressure line. This is the one that blew on me. Makes sense. It was under pressure. And this is my return line right here. Now the return line is just this metal rigid line that comes down here and dumps into the reservoir down here. The pressure line goes around the back 
couples to another old line and goes it's this one right here goes right into the back of the manifold now I think there may be yeah it, it's it's not actually the manifold it's this block that's sandwiched between the hydraulic valve and the actual hydraulic manifold assembly and I believe what's in here is your um, pressure relief valve or some kind of a check valve system I, I don't know the correct nomenclature but basically I believe it's the thing that's gonna uh, limit pressure to the hydraulics out here if you're demanding hydraulics for the steer. In other words, I think it gives priority to the steering circuit. So, the point I'm trying to make is that if I disconnect these two lines right here at this point, I'm not going to lose a lot of fluid unless I let this hose right here just kind of drop down low, and then I'm going to only lose fluid in the top part of the manifold here uh, in reservoir. I mean, this reservoir is huge because it's the combination transmission hydraulic reservoir. It holds like, I don't know, what did I say, 30-something gallons? Um, no, not gallons. 30, 32 or 35 quarts, I think it was. But, I mean, still, 4 quarts to a gallon, you know, you got gallons of fluid. So, I uh, really don't want to dump all that right now. If I get everything straightened out and running correctly, you can bet I'm going to do a complete drain and refill on this uh, hydraulic system. But for now... I'm just going to disconnect these lines so I can get this thing apart and see what I got going on inside there. Uh, I do see I'm going to have to remove the starter because you got some cap screws here. This one I can just barely get onto. Uh, it's a little obstructed, but there's another one behind here that's completely obstructed by the starter. So I got to get the starter out of there. And then uh, it's starting to look like I'll be able to pull this whole assembly out with not much more to do other than the lines and those cap screws and then of course I've got a room um, tie rod ends here have to be separated which there's no cotter pins in these if they're not too badly seized up I should be able to get these nuts off and then I'm gonna need a pickle fork to uh, separate that and we might get lucky might get this thing out without too much work now the only thing that I'm a little worried about is I see some beads of weld over here. And I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but of course the bad answer would be that somebody welded the base of this steering gear down to the top of the tractor frame um, or transmission case. Now, if that's the case, I'll be looking at some serious grinding to get that apart. And if that, is end, if that ends up indeed being the case, then I may end up not wanting to take that base off after all. I may want to just split the case right here, where it splits in two, and leave this part in the tractor and service it as best I can that way. But... I believe there's some shimming involved that I may not be able to do effectively if, I, if I'm not able to take this whole base off. So well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Oh, one last official act before I quit for the night. Let's give these threads a little PB blaster love. Let them soak so that tomorrow when I get back to this, hopefully I won't have too much trouble getting those out. Alrighty.